Hi, my name is Dr. Ruben. I'm a board certified allergist. Unfortunately, I cannot diagnose this condition over the internet just based off of a couple of pictures and sentences, but I hope this information is helpful for him, but also for you as well, because one of the terms that was in that video was something called mast cell activation, and I wanna give you some more information about it to help spread awareness towards various mast cell disorders. In fact, I'm actually writing a book about allergic diseases, and one of the chapters is going to go over various mast cell disorders. The mast cell is an important cell of your immune system involved in initiating that immune response against various germs, such as bacteria and parasites, but it is also one of the main culprits in creating allergic reactions to foreign substances. There are various diseases of mast cells called mast cell disorders, and the definitions have been evolving rapidly over the last 10 to 20 years to encompass various diseases where there are too many mast cells, they're hyperreactive, or I like to call them twitchy, or it may be both issues. And so there are broad categories to help conceptualize what these different diseases are, one of which is something called mast cell activation syndrome, or MCAS. MCAS has become more of an umbrella term to describe various primary mast cell disorders where it's inherent to the mast cell itself, secondary mast cell disorders where there's an abnormal immune response that involves mast cells, but it's really from these foreign substances to which we could map out what the potential underlying mechanism is. This is what we think of when we think about food allergies, drug allergies, etc. Or it's an idiopathic mast cell activation syndrome where there are many different triggers for what's going on, but we really don't know what the underlying cause is. The current clinical diagnostic criteria that is accepted by most people around the world involve three major criteria that you really need to meet all three in order to have a clinical diagnosis of MCAS and excluding other diseases. The first includes severe recurrent symptoms that involve two or more organ systems. So that could be hives, flushing, itching, you know, skin symptoms, cardiovascular problems where there's episodes of low blood pressure or passing out, breathing problems like wheezing, shortness of breath, or gastrointestinal issues such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. A lot of these symptoms are found in many different diseases, but you need to at least have that to start. The second clinical criteria is where we actually have laboratory tests that measure elevated levels of products that are released from mast cells, the main one being tryptase, but then there are various tests that we can measure in the urine that's collected typically over 24 hours to measure breakdown products from the mast cells, such as N-methylhistamine, various leukotrienes and prostaglandins as well, but those tests are not very accurate. And then the third clinical criteria is that you take medicines that block the effects of chemicals released from mast cells, such as antihistamines, leukotriene receptor antagonists like Montelukast, also known as Singulair, mast cell stabilizers like chromalin sodium. These medications help significantly improve those symptoms. You really need those three clinical criteria in order to be considered for mast cell activation syndrome. If those clinical criteria are met or it's suspected of being met, then you may need additional testing to look into potential genetic mutations of the mast cell itself in order to figure out what the potential underlying cause is. Could this be something like systemic mastocytosis or monoclonal mast cell activation syndrome where there's one particular line of mast cells that's being produced in the bone marrow that are too many? There's actually even uh, something called mast cell leukemia that's exquisitely rare that I've never seen where it's a type of blood cancer involving mast cells? Uh, or is this something where we consider it truly idiopathic mast cell activation syndrome where we really don't know the underlying cause? There are various challenges with diagnosing and managing mast cell activation syndrome, mainly because one, physicians don't necessarily know a lot about it because it's not taught in medical school and it's an evolving field. Two, the tests are very expensive and often have to be repeated multiple times and may not be accurate. And three, when you do these tests, ideally you have to do it when you're not feeling well and it can be very difficult to get it done and get it to the right lab at the right time in order to see that positive result. So sometimes we have to experimentally treat people as if they have MCAS, but they actually don't. And hopefully they respond to the medications, but if they don't, we still have to seek whether there are alternative diagnoses that could explain what somebody is going through. It's a very challenging process. It can be very frustrating for patients and physicians in order to help people feel better. I hope you found this information helpful and I'm excited to share with you 
all this information that I'm writing down in my upcoming book. So feel free to follow to learn more along the way.